Welcome back to another episode of Horror Whores and Other Horrible Topics. We are your favorite whores here to talk about horror, gay shit, and other horrible topics. My name is Zach. And I'm Nick. Thank you for coming back to Vibe. Whether you're listening on your drive to work, hanging with us in your free time, or murdering us on the dance floor, we really appreciate you. Obviously, we will be talking about Saltburn, so stick around. Uh, spoiler alert, I loved it. I should have loved it. Okay, we'll let's, get into no. This. Let's get into it. Let's get into it right you wanna, now. Let's before do it. we even talk about like before we even ca- this is the first time we are talking in like two weeks. We're just gonna jump right into that. We're not gonna. No. Okay, no you're way. right. Okay. Hey, well, how you doing? Let's talk. You're right. Let's talk about Christmas. Let's talk about Christmas. Um. Hey, Nick. How how are your holidays? How um, are you doing? My holidays sucked ass. I was sick again. Again, again, I was sick. Hey, uh, I'm gonna need you to stop. I'm trying very hard. Uh, literally, like maybe yesterday or the day before that was the first day that I was like, okay, I feel normal. I still have a congested situation, but it's much better than it was. This might be TMI, and I'm I apologize in advance. I was shitting my brains out for days. For days. I woke up on Christmas Eve every hour on the hour to poop. I got to the point, I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, stop pooping. (laughs) And did you listen? No. (laughs) No. (laughs) Was it a stomach like virus bug situation? Yes. Didn't you also just have one of those? Like, yes. Like, I recall discussing, like, very much this exact same horrible topic last time. Yes. The the time before that, I was throwing up. This was the other end. And do you know what? I don't know which is worse. What's going on here? Are you, like, eating the wrong ass and, like, getting, like... You know, I'm honestly... I'm honestly unsure. I did go to a party where I did a lot of things. Where eating ass was on the menu? Yes, and I did I, that. Um, so I I, I I don't know how much legitimacy is in it, but I've heard that like, if you have been eating some potentially unsavory ass and you end up with like a little stomach bug, it's because of that. Really? I don't uh, listen. I could be t- I could be I could be lying. I could be lying, but that's what I've heard. If there are any doctors in the audience who can confirm or deny, also I need you to define. Did you say unsavory ass? Unclean. Oh, like poopy. Like poopy? Like because I mean, because you're you're getting some some debris in your system that you shouldn't be. I am so sorry that I've. Uh, I we should have. I mean, it is horrible topics. This, I thought this you just directly. Meant like- this directly corresponds, or this is the the cross section between gay, literal gay shit, and horrible topics, and I'm so sorry. Well, eating so eating ass is back? out in 2024. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Eating unsavory ass. Go to the shower. I want to watch you clean up. I, count me out. I, if I can't trust you to wash your ass, you should probably go. Yeah, what are we doing here? We what are we doing go. here? Um, but I listen. It probably wasn't that. It probably it. Pro- Thank you. I, yeah, it was probably just a stomach bug. No, I I, I had a normal a, stomach bug. I had the conversation with my husband where I was like, you know, I'm actually afraid that something might be wrong with my body. Uh, cue the hypochondriac. Is it cancer? Um. But I haven't I haven't gone to the doctor. Well, and I will continue to not go to the doctor because um, this is partially my fault. So throughout Oct- or throughout December, I was getting emails. Uh, I have uh, the affordable affordable health insurance through the federal government, and mm-hmm. um, I uh, because I have no job and haven't had a job for a while. I qualified for the um, like uh, assistance um, to pay for it. <clears throat> So I was paying like ten dollars a month for my health insurance, which is lovely. It was great. Um, but okay. throughout the month of December, I was getting emails saying, "Hey, your health insurance premium is going to go up. Um, 
log in by this day to um do whatever whatever and i was like um, okay oh baby i thought oh, no. i thought they were just gonna like bump it up i thought i would pay like twenty dollars more or whatever um well i did get an alert uh, that my auto pay was about to go out and it was $250. So I promptly turned that, uh, auto payment off and I have, uh, I will be calling them this week to be like, Hey, I'm still very poor. <laughs> <laughs> Help me. Please don't take my health insurance away. <laughs> I'm poor and I could be dying. <laughs> Literally. So, um, you know what else is out in 2024? Health insurance. <laughs> Yours, specifically. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Huh. Okay, so, um... Hey, I'm gonna need you to not get sick anymore. I, um, I'm, I'm gonna do my best. Um, let's, we're gonna get you some health insurance, and we're gonna get you well. Yeah. So, um, if you have, if there are any pay pigs, um, or sugar daddies out there, I am accepting both. Um... You can also people. just like sub to the OnlyFans, or that works too. Um, or buy feed pics. <clears throat> I don't know. I, you know, you, uh, no one has offered to buy my feet pics, and it is becoming an insecurity of mine. Like, do I have ugly feet? I know I have hairy toes. Do people not like hairy I, toes? I think they might just not know that the product is available. Maybe you need to like listen. Do a little teaser. You guys come come in close. I need everybody to hear this. I need everybody to listen to this. My body is a product for your consumption. You just have to pay for it. Meow. You just have to ask. Just ask for what you want. It's true. Are um, the DMs <clears throat> open for feet pick requests? Oh my god. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said they've been open. Literally. They've been dry. Literally. I've been waiting. Mm. Um so yeah, so, um other than that, Christmas was good. Um we got some good stuff. Um my the thing about my parents is that like um in terms of emotional support, there is none. But at Christmas, they do show out and they do the thing and spend a lot of money, and I do appreciate that. Um but after January, I I don't I forget. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Listen, you get one good month, and, you know, sometimes that's, well, more like one good day. And, yes. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes that's, <sighs> you know, the most we can ask for. It's true. Um, well, and also seeing my little sister who has one child already and just popped out her second yesterday um, or two days ago. I'm a very bad brother slash uncle. Um, watching her open all of her presents and they were all for her children and she got, like, a couple for herself, I was like, Sucks to suck, doesn't it? You may Ooh. be the favorite, and our parents may see you every day and dote on their grandchildren every day, but you didn't get any Christmas presents, bitch. <laughs> Aren't those gifts supposed to be going to the kids? I That's one thing that, like, if you're a parent or stuff like that, giving gifts for the child has always been weird to me. Because I guess it's like they don't have to spend that money then. Wait. So it's like more money oh. in their ca- Yeah, okay, so, like, they're not spending as much money on gifts for their own child. It's like a... Okay, grandma and grandpa, you do that for us. Mm, okay. Still. Mm. <clears throat> I yeah, no, I'm right there with you. You won. I'm, I'm I definitely definitely won. Um uh highlight, this is from my husband. Incredible. Look I Look at that little hole. That little well, it's not really a hole, but it looks like it. Nick's going to get us taken down off of YouTube. Uh, <laughs> No, uh, no. Honestly, this is how my butt looks. I'm a, it, that's Bolin, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Just making sure. Yeah, baby. That is a great gift. I love it. And here I am, sans a mouse pad. <laughs> I live on the edge. I have two. I have one of those like really big mouse pads and then um, this. So I could share, but I, you're far away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, send me the Bolin one. Mm-hmm. Share that one with me. No, sir. <laughs> uh, sisterhood of the traveling ass mouse pad. Uh, I'll get my wrist all up in there. Okay. Right? You, you, you cannot your... fist Bolin. Oh. The... I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I'm like, you're not going to give this back to me all blown out. 
<laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. How weird. Stop fucking my mouse pad. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, how was your Christmas? Um, Christmas was good. I live far away from my family, um, so I did not see them, which, you know. Um, is good, though, has right? It, has its positives. Okay. Has its positives. Yep. Um, so we did host, so Christmas Eve spent with some of the besties. So that was really chill, low key, very nice. Emphasis on um, some because I was not there. Mm -hmm. I mean, baby, you live in the wrong state. I, I don't know how to. I know. We need to get you like a hype, uh, some kind of like railway that you just like can sit on <laughs> for like a. We'll set up a station right in my living room. It will Thank take you, you directly you. there. Um, I'll just. Who is working on teleportation? I was literally about to say, I'm just going to work on my teleportation uh, skill tree and I'll be there soon. Like, let's get <clears throat> on it. It is time. Um, so that was really nice. And then Christmas, Jamie wanted to. Jamie had a bunch of friends uh, that stayed in town. And since we stayed in town, we decided to do. Okay, wait. There's two. First of all, I had been calling it since before we did the Black Christmas rewatch mm -hmm. and Orphan's Christmas. Okay. So, like, at the very beginning, and if anybody went and followed along with us on the Black Christmas movies and watched Black Christmas 2019, that's they call it an Orphan's Christmas for anyone who is staying on campus. Yeah. Did I steal this from that movie and it just lived inside my brain, buried, and it just... Or, I mean, I think it's... Was a, that a thing before that? I think it's a common trope for queer people. Okay, I, I just, <clears throat> I kept using the term and people kept looking at me very surprised by it. And then we rewatched Black Christmas 2019 and they said it. I was like, did I, did I take this? No, Anyways. I think you, I think it was an original thought that you just didn't realize wasn't original. I have a lot of those. Mm -hmm. Sometimes something gets embedded in my brain and I'm like, oh, wow, I'm so smart. And it's what would be like. That's from that episode of Fairly Odd Parrots you watched in like 2005, and I'm like, oh right. Yeah, but you don't remember that. You don't remember that. But sometimes your brain, it, your brain know. will keep track of like certain things that, and then as soon Not as mine. it's like brought back up, like I watched a lot of YouTube was doing uh, Cartoon Network holiday specials. And I had forgotten about so many of them until they showed back up. And I remembered every single beat. Like, my brain, like, kept it all. Like, the Billy and Mandy Christmas special. Oh, oh bitch, I remembered word for word most of that. But I had forgotten that existed. Where Santa turns into a, a, a vampire and there's this one incredibly gay vampire that comes to help them. I don't remember this at all. Uh, neither did I until I was watching it and could word for word like quote it. Same with like the Powerpuff Girls. I remember the Powerpuff Girls Christmas special, but like I remembered a, like every detail. I don't remember that either. I guess I have some like, stuff to watch next year. Oh damn! Okay, yeah, it was great. They just played it on YouTube, just continuous, just all of the old cartoon specials that were like from my childhood. I loved it. What was I talking about? Oh, Orphan's Christmas. Yes. So we had a bunch of people just in the area, either people who live in LA, a lot of times their family does not live here, or it's queer people that mm -hmm. aren't seeing their family for whatever reason, or there's people whose partners leave to go do various things. And they're, so we had a bunch of people that were just in town and Jamie and I basically opened up our apartment. We called it Orphan's Christmas. We were like, hey, stop by whenever you want. We'll have food, we'll have drinks, bring some food, bring some drinks. We'll have just like, Christmas specials on the TV or whatever. It ended up being a lot more people than we expected. Oh, like shit. I did not, ex I expected to be sitting on the couch with like a couple people coming and going being like, should we watch Home Alone 2? Mm -hmm. No, it was like a full fucking event. Fun. It, it was very fun. I had such a great job, but I was not expecting to like be hosting, hosting. So <clears throat> I was, Jamie and I were in the kitchen basically the entire time he was baking cookies. I was making soup. And like getting drinks, doing doing the full hosting thing. I mean, sounds like you're gonna have to do that every year. I I guess. So. I mean, I'll I'll do my best because it was exhausting. It was a lot of fun, but we did so. something kind of similar. Um, we just had some of the guys that we've been going out with lately over to our uh, place for um, some dirty Santa. 
some sexy dirty santa everybody got sex toys oh fun okay Mm -hmm. i've never done that it was cute it was a lot of fun um i got this game let me show you here we go nick's gonna get us kicked off of youtube again maybe is penises i mean that's phallic but it's not like super penisy so you oh you do it like this and okay, you have somebody, now we're gonna get kicked off. You have somebody on the other side. <clears throat> and For you... anybody who is just listening and not watching, let me go ahead and say Nick has. We this, don't. We don't have this... the just listening option. But but people could just be like, oh, sure. When you're okay. on Spotify, you yeah, could. Yeah, let yeah. me. So let me just. If you're like lifting at the gym or you were in your car and not watching, let me go ahead and describe. Nick has brought out some kind of torture instrument, which is at the base purple and at the top pink for the phalluses in which the head and like half of the shaft are this pink um there are also huge purple ball like appendages on the bottom he has it cuddled between his face and earlier was sticking his mouth into it and so if we are if we are getting cut off by youtube and you cannot complete the episode or you're not hearing this that is the reason why so nick go ahead and do what you are going to do okay so it's this game where you have uh, you put water in here, and you uh, or whatever we we had discussed putting um, vodka in there, but we decided oh, okay, against fun. it. So um, you have somebody on the other side, and you have to like <clears throat> jerk it off. And the first the the one who jerks it off the furious furious the most fast and furiously furiously mm-hmm. um, gets a shot of stuff into their mouth. So you have to play it like this. It was a lot of fun. Honestly, sounds fun. I am I worried it. about, or am I truly worried about YouTube completely removing us? Listen, Maybe. Don't get mad at me. Get, oh. Okay, get mad on uh, Cum Face. This is the name of the. <laughs> is that the name of the game or the, the company? It's the name of the game. Um, ah. Get mad at, get mad at Cum Face. I could never get mad at cum face. Oh, God, me either. <laughs> um, so yeah, we played that. It was fun. Um, I did. So like when you, okay. What's your vibe for like a white elephant, dirty Santa ex- exchange? Nothing. Do not invite me if you were doing, uh, sorry, controversial take. I hate a white elephant <gasps> in which I have to prepare a gift for someone that I do not know. I already hate getting gifts because I, I, I buy the, I buy gifts and I'm like, wow, the person's going to love it. And then two weeks before I give it to them, I'm like, this is the worst gift ever. They're going to hate me as a friend. I did not get enough. I did not get a good enough gift. And then I question my entire life. But okay, so, wait, so you're, getting, it, you're getting the gift for a specific person? Yeah, I just do not like the act of being forced to get a gift for someone. There's a difference between like... If it's like a birthday and I just like get to focus on a single person, but the okay. the effort of Christmas where I'm getting multiple gifts, trying to stay within my budget, mm-hmm. and then if there is a white elephant where like I have to be within a budget and I do not know who this gift is going to, or like if it's going to appeal to everyone, because I, I had a traumatic experience <laughs> where, sorry, there was a traumatic, I was in, uh, fuck, what was it called? Um <sighs> Uh, it was this high school club that was like the business, like young business people, whatever. Um, but they had a, ew. <laughs> I know they had a Christmas event and I did not know until the day of that there was a white elephant and I just had to go to Walmart and find something. And my gift was so strangely wrapped. No one picked it. <laughs> And so I'm just traumatized. Was it a good gift? No. It was just whatever I could find at Walmart an hour before the event. <clears throat> okay, well, Anyways. first of all, let me help you out in case you are ever invited to another Dirty Santa slash White Elephant get-together, whatever. And Buy before, you help, before okay. you help me out, let me just say, do not invite me to your white elephant or dirty I, Santa. If I ever have one again I, and we live in the same state, I am inviting you and you will come. And let me tell you how to do it. Okay. All right. Tell me how to come. You, you, don't, uh, you, already, showed, you already showed us. <laughs> all you don't buy a gift. You don't even think about buying a gift for another person. You buy a gift for yourself. You buy something that at the end you would want 
because then it gives you something if ever if all the other gifts are ass you know there's one gift under that tree that you're gonna want to want and that's what i did i got a glass hand blown glass butt plug and um one of those like jerker offer things um what was the budget for this uh, we didn't really have a budget, but I, I had a couple people ask and I was like, uh, my, my thinking is like 30 to $50. I spent like 40, okay. I think I spent 40. Okay. Okay. Um, the jerker offer was like five bucks. Is there another name for those? I, are you talking about like the egg things or so, like, well, kind of, it was just the, like, like silicone, sleeve. like tube. Yes. Yes. yes, yes yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, um, cause I was thinking like, uh, the, Butt plug is obviously for the bottoms. This is for the tops, and there's a little something for everybody. Hmm, okay, um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, wait, were they packaged together in the gift, or did you bring multiple gifts? Uh, I just like wrapped them together. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So by the end of it, that is what I chose. I did steal it from somebody, so now I have a glass butt plug. Wait, but I thought you got the game. No, I bought that to play. Uh, I just got that to play. Oh, okay, okay. I mm. wait. So you ended up leaving with your own gift? Yes. Okay, wait. This is. I need to be taking notes. Wait, this is so smart. This is actually brilliant. Thank you, thank you. I always, anytime I do one of those things, I'm like, I'm gonna buy something that I would want, and then that way, if everything else sucks, I'm gonna just take my gift back. And let me tell you, the person who I stole it from was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, this is like I want to make sure I pause and highlight how brilliant this actually is. Thank you. Like I hope everyone is taking notes. This is so smart. So every single white elephant exchange I now go to Hatsune Miku figures. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. Yes. No, it's honestly it's perfect because even if you're going to a get together where not a single person gives a fuck about anime, Hatsune Miku, whatever, they're going to open it and it's going to be like a dud and it's going to be funny. And even if you're the only one laughing, those are the best jokes. That's mine then, baby. <laughs> That's but exactly. What happens if you're at the beginning of the white elephant and you can't then steal? So I was first. I was the very first one to go. And because I was but first. But the first person always has the ability to at the end. But what happens if you're like second or third? Um, well, then you pray that someone steals your gift. Which, I mean, if you're playing it right, there's going to be some stealing going on. Right? Mm, okay. Uh, see, the last one that I did, like, no one stole anything. Everyone Boo! was just, like, content with their gift. No, that's lame. Or, like, wanted to see what was, like, new. I mean, That's I got a massage gun out of it, so, like, it worked Ooh, out for me. Ooh, like a... I mean, Actually, I think I was the only person that stole, <laughs> and I stole the mach- the massage gun. And so the person that you stole from was like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll keep your gift. No, they just... Uh, no, because instead of picking a gift, I stole their gift, and then they just went and got a new one. Instead oh, of, they like, got stealing a new one. From okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I yeah. got you. Um, See, I like it... Uh, okay, how do you play Dirty Santa? Because when I play it, the first one at the very end gets to steal and then the person that i stole from also steals until the the person is content the person who like gets stolen from is content with their gift is that how you play it i think we're saying the same thing potentially so it's how the first person always has to choose one gift Yes. And then everyone after them can either steal from one of the people in front of them or get a new gift. Yes. If they decide to steal from an earlier person, that person can then choose to steal a different gift or just get a new gift. If they get a new gift, then it just passes to the next person. Right. I'm talking about at the very, very end, though. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, at so, the very end, we've played that the person with the first yes. the very first person they can steal give their yeah they can steal and exchange their gift with someone else okay so that person who gets their gift stolen do they continue then can to cont- steal? okay y- yes okay that's I, how actually I- actually i don't know i've never been i don't again i don't go to white elephants or dirty <laughs> santa so i i haven't been in that situation so Sorry, last bro. time i played everyone was content okay and everyone was just like yeah okay this is chill and i'm like 
Well, there are a couple people there that were like, uh, this is not how I've played this game. And I'm like, okay, whatever. My house or my rules. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, remember when we had even more on our agenda we were going to talk about? What? And we're already... <laughs> I do <laughs> remember. We're only like 25 minutes in. We've only talked about Christmas, though. Oh, fuck. You're right. Okay, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> moving to New on. Year's. Wait a minute. T tell me about your... Were you well enough to do <sighs> New Year's? Yes. Yes, I was. Um, yeah, Did that... you do anything? Yeah, we bought tickets to um, a local drag show. One of my friends of, like, 10 years recently bought, like, my personal favorite gay bar. So we have been um, going to that bar a lot lately. Um, and they were doing a drag show, so we bought tickets to that. Uh, promptly came home at, at, at immediately after midnight. Nice. I was okay. so tired. See, we ended up hosting again. We had oh, just work. hosted on Christmas, and then we hosted – because. Listen, I live in a one bedroom, but the apartment does have like some open space yeah. to actually like host a little event. Mm -hmm. So we, that ended up also being a bigger event than we expected because everyone wanted a plus one. Look, there you're was so also, popular in LA. Look there was you. also, I know, I just, it's this sweet face. I'm just so kind. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, there was also a dog attended. The okay. cats were not pleased. I can imagine. <laughs> But the dog was super chill. It was like a super chill dog. Um, <clears throat> the party got a little, like, like rain in your minds a little bit, but it got a little sluttier than expected. Okay. Um. So I, so I kissed a couple boys. It was very nice. Love that. Obviously made out with the boyfriend for mm -hmm. the actual ball drop midnight. Um, found out there was, listen, I'm... I'm a, I'm a wild and free gal. If I go into a circuit party or something like that, I'll, I'll do a little something, something. But I've never hosted an event where, like, I found out, like, people were doing ketamine in the bathroom or something like that. Or so people doing here. coke in your bathroom. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> so someone came out at one point and was like, hey, so so-and-so were doing ketamine in the bathroom. They're using your nail polish to crush it up. And I was like, wait, I need to go see this. And I was like, <laughs> I'm naming a nail polish after this exact situation. K in the bathroom? K in the bathroom or something like that. I love it. Yeah. Um, there was also some other slutty things. But um, yeah, the night before also, um, for anyone who knows uh, online personality, person uh blizz bear came to visit oh. and uh went to little tokyo the night before and then the night afterwards we went to a gay adv event called otter pop which was a lot of fun kiss a lot of boys there and so kiss boys on saturday kiss boys on sunday i swore i was gonna let me knock on some wood i i was gonna say this was, was only two days ago i know and i had said no kissing strange boys I, you did before New Year's. So I was like, I've broken my own rule. I'm going to, like, midweek, I'm going to be so <clears throat> sick. I'm, I'm doing good, baby. You I'm doing good. Work. This weekend, going out for premiere of Drag Race and then have an event on Saturday, going to kiss some more boys. I'm I'm good to go, baby. 2024, oh, yeah. we're not getting sick at all. Kissing all the boys. No Put that into the universe. Uh, knock on that wood, bitch. I I was sick enough in 2023, just like I feel like you got your sicknesses out of the way. And we're then we're done. Yeah. Out, getting sick. In, yes. kissing strange boys. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, speaking of Drag Race, I'm very excited about it. Uh, the bar that I had mentioned is going to do a watch party. Um, and <laughs> I was talking to my friend and I was like, so I think this person does your social media, right? And he's like, yes. And I was like, do you like, do you love him doing that? <laughs> okay, in throwing other people <laughs> under the bus to get the job you want, out not having a job. So Nick, I support you. This is 2024's cutthroat out here. Thank it's you. just, it is what it is. Thank you. So he was like, okay, well, um, why don't you come to Drag Race on Friday and come to brunch on Sunday? I'll comp your tickets and you just get some footage and make me a couple videos. I'll pay you a hundred bucks and we'll just see how it goes. And I was like, you got yourself a deal, Nick, bitch. baby, I love this for you. I feel like you'd be really, really good at social media. For, I hope like, so. 
brands so. and stuff like content like you've done the content creating you've yeah. done the the content farming c- c- farming cultivating i don't know there's some there's some word uh i think honestly i think that's a great next step for you I... and i love <sighs> that you had to, that you took someone that you're potentially taking someone down for it i'm sorry i'm sorry do that's, better I... I, yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry. This might sound mean of us. Maybe we're being mean, but like 2024 is cutthroat. Go for what you want. Like, we're all struggling out here. Yes. Don't, Go, don't be Get what you want. I'm yeah. excited. Um, I think it's going to be fun. Um, I'm excited to, to start making like mixes for the girls. Not like music. I mean like uh, recording their numbers and then like making a video out of that. I'm excited to do that. Well, because you can even then start working for individual queens if they want, like, something on the side. Just That like... or uh, any of the other bars on the strip, because we have, like, eight or nine gay bars all in, like, a block radius. Baby, monopolize. I'm trying. I'm trying. Monopolize. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, uh, cross your fingers for me. But that goes well. Love that for you. Thank you. Um, I'm very <clears throat> excited for Drag Race, because I did not watch any of the other stuff that happened in between... All stars? I don't know. What was what was what was last that was like a uh, United States based? Uh, I think it was All Stars. Okay, I have I did not watch Canada. I know it was good. I just like Ugh, I knew for myself I needed a break, and I gave. So people kept being like the no breaks in Drag Race. I was like, oh, I Who made said a break. That? Who's saying that? Who's saying know, that? people? People, people are people are silly. People are silly. Well, and it's uh, it's silly because I keep seeing so many people still. We've been doing international seasons of Drag Race for what like five years now, and I still see people that are like, "Oh, it's too much. I have fatigue, baby. Don't watch. Don't well, watch." Well, that's what that's exactly what I did. That's, and I'm but thank some you. people I'm need to make that. that choice for themselves. But then there's also stuff like Dragula happening at the same time and stuff like that. Oh, and yeah. there is Dragula the... not, this is not that great this season. I've never been a Dragula girly. I watched. I I looked at it with my eyes. Yeah. But a lot of the drama seems very manufactured. I totally agree. To have on set drama. Yeah. Because from what I like, from what I can tell, like most of the like most of them are like friends outside of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's giving. <laughs> we're a little too self aware and trying to, like you said, manufacture some drama and it's just like i'm rolling my, i'm rolling my eyes bitch that's that's the thing i don't really need drama in <clears throat> i don't need manufactured forced drama in queer reality properties drama for the drama's would, sake out yeah drama for the drama's sake out like i will get that in real housewives which we will yep. talk about in a second oh, i will get that like let the let the people who are <laughs> Let the people who are not dealing with other societal issues let them let them have their drama. Let them do Period. the girls that have all the money yes. that they don't that the drama is just for fun. Let them have that drama. I feel that. Well, I just I'll... I just want to support the girls and see what what incredible things they're making. I want to see the art, and that's okay. So that's how I feel about it because it's the same way I feel about Great British Baking Show versus literally any other baking or cooking competition based in the U.S. In the U.S., it is, you have a time crunch, you have two hours to make this magnificent cake, whereas Great British Baking Show, they're like, okay, next week, these are the prompts for the challenges. Now go home, practice, and give us your best, like, thing that you can make after practicing for a week. And you get, like incredible stuff the the drama is not manufactured people are still gonna fuck up they're still gonna drop their cake they're still gonna do stuff and it's still gonna be interesting but it's so much more i just uh, so it, it's so see, much I'm more never, better see i've never watched great british bake off oh gosh i've heard it's like a really great cozy watch the best However, cozy watch on the other side I adore Nailed It because even oh, though there's so a time good. crunch, they're supposed to be making something. There's like no punishment for doing bad. No. I love, like, if you do bad, you're actually a fan favorite. Of, like, th- you don't lose anything. You don't feel bad. You're just like, <laughs> I did. I tried. Well, and even with that show, they're like uh, aspiring bakers. They're not professionals. So the fact, yeah. they're just happy to be there. They're just happy to be here. There's um, no stakes. Yes. Like, and e- and they know like the the challenges that they're having to do. They're like, this is so out 
outside of what I know how to do. And they're just like, all right, here we go. And I, that's, it's wholesome. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Vibe. So let's talk about housewives. I have- Nick, okay, so first let me set the stage for this. I don't know if we talked about ah! Housewives before. Ah! I was never a housewife girly. I have uh, since I met of- him been trying to get him to watch fucking Housewives. I'll like uh, quite a few of my besties, Nick being the most vocal and loud of them, are are housewives girlies. I never really saw the appeal because I was like a bunch of super rich people that are just going to have drama and stuff like that. I but... used to think the same thing before I met Nathan. It was like a badge of honor that I had never seen a housewife show. And like mm-hmm. f- a few years mm-hmm. after us knowing each other and dating, whatever, he was like, I think you'd really like it. And that was it for me. That was it. Yeah. <sighs> I So I started with, um, because it was a single season. It was just one season. And I had sent Nick. There was like, some night where like Jamie was off doing something, I was sitting stoned. I wanted to just like turn my mind off and watch something. It was Nick and I are in different time zones. I had texted being like, "Hey, what season should I start with? What should I watch?" Nick did not respond. Nick was asleep. I'm sorry. And I was like, "This is one season. I started with Real Housewives of Dubai." Oh. Oh. Which was <laughs> For someone who had no idea, because I was coming off of, um, uh, fuck, I'm blanking. Um, Netflix. Love houses. is Blind? No. Oh. Um, Are they selling houses? Real, yes. Real, selling, selling, selling Sunset. Sun- wow. Whoo. Okay. Huh. Anyways, Jamie and I crushed <clears throat> Selling Sunset. Fucking loved it. Did I want to do the spinoffs? No. I, also, new season of Selling Sunset. Excellent. Okay. Um. But I was just coming off of that. I was like, I need something else. So Housewives of Dubai, I was like, "Mm, it's, it's, it's something. I started, I was like, I'm going to commit to this. But I got Nick sent me like two novels of where I should, (laughs) what I should be doing. So I, at some point I will start Potomac. I had started the new season of New York. It was boring. I'm sorry. I didn't even finish the new season. The new, the new generation of gals. Okay. I see. I I thought even. I thought even Dubai was more interesting. Than really? Because, only because of the culture. I really liked okay. learning about a culture that I was actually, like, super unfamiliar with. Um, but I started, I was like, you know what, Salt Lake City, we got some religious trauma mixed in there. I'm sure it's, I've heard it's wild. I, like, knew that someone got arrested. Oh I was like, God. you know what, I'll give this one a go. Oh. Real Housewives of Salt Lake City People can try their entire lives. Like, people who are professional writers, directors, producers, studios, they can try their entire lives to write something as good as Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and they will not come close. No. The drama, the stories, the characters, the insanity. Tens, tens, tens across the board. The whiplash, the not knowing where anything is going. Yeah, bitch. I, like, people, it uh, is if you 10 are, out of 10 TV. If anybody is even, on, uh, even barely on the fence about trying to start Housewives and you don't know where to start, it is Salt Lake City. Last season, we watched Jen Shaw get arrested for a federal crime on a Sprinter van. And this finale tops it. I'm getting chills thinking about it. This, Absolutely oh the most I've, insane hour of television I think I've ever seen. I am so I like I have been dodging spoilers. Like I think I think I have a vibe. I I like I don't know how it goes down, but I like. What do you think? Is, what do you think is? What do you think it is? I, there's a traitor in the midst. I'm pretty sure Monica is like. I, like, I don't exactly know wh- what, but I, like, I know Monica, because we already know that Heather and Monica have that lawsuit going on. Uh-huh. So, like, I think Monica, like, somehow is, like, stealing from these women or is, like, using them for some purpose you're, or something. Bitch, you're not ready. You are I'm not, not ready. fucking I'm, ready. So, everyone listening to this the week after this came out, you'll already know what's going on, but I am... I'm so excited to get in. Going back to the Jen Shaw thing. When people had told me that someone got arrested, I was like, oh yeah, they'll probably do like some like 
a slideshow of like pictures of her. No, no, no. These girls were on a van to a vacation. They are filming as federal agents roll up. The girls have no idea what's going on. Jen Shaw is fleeing the scene. Like this, t like they, the, the federal agents went to her house. I'm pretty sure her housekeeper told them where they were meeting. To, like, they were uh, literally about to leave the parking lot to drive to their destination. And the feds pulled up on them, pulled her out of that van. It was absolutely crazy. Wait, can I ask you something about yes. this finale? Yes. Is it Jen Shaw related? Um, <laughs> yes. <gasps> Are you kidding? Kind of. Okay, kind please. of. Kind of. Okay. She okay, is okay, involved, okay. yes. It's gaggy. It's gaggy. I cannot wait. I literally cannot wait. Okay. You have to text me when you when you watch it tonight. Even All if right. I'm asleep, I, I will respond first thing in the morning. I had I have to do the podcast. Jamie's gonna get home, he's gonna go to the gym, and we're gonna make dinner and we're gonna sit down with some wine and watch it and I whew, You're I'm not so ready. Excited. You're not ready. The editing, the way that they edited the, the episode, fucking Chef's kiss. Uh, like, ooh. ooh. So the editors deserve those two yes. weeks off for the holidays. Because yes. Jamie, like every, I, I was like, Jamie, they are off for two weeks. Every Wednesday, he was like, check. And I was like, Jamie, they're off for two weeks. He's like, but why? <laughs> and this is the other, this is the other thing. Like, Jamie has no interest in any other housewives property. We've tried a few together. He tried Dubai with me. He tried New York with me. But Salt Lake City, he is obsessed with. People will come over, like on Christmas, people were over and he was like, have you watched Salt Lake City? Have you watched Salt Lake City? <laughs> and he will like pull people aside for like a 30 minute <laughs> rant on each character, why they're wild. He'll be like, now let me tell you about Mary. Uh, oh, <laughs> something about Mary, bitch. Mary. Married, Mary married her grandfather. Mary married her grandfather and now hates that bitch. Yeah. Hates him. Um, um uh so my next my next goal is to gonna get is to get you into Real Housewives of Beverly Hills because it is there is a reason why it is it is the shining star of Bravo and the Housewives as a whole. I in fact okay. I'll do you one better. I will tell you which season to get into, and I will give you a, an episode list to watch before that, so you're all caught up and you understand the characters because they're oh there's one Brandy Glanville. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a, a beautiful, lovely night. I am a, I'm obsessed with Brandy, Brandy Glanville. I, uh, oh. Okay, so, um, spinoff podcast coming soon. Real hoes, <gasps> wives of faggotry. I don't know. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Real I... hoes of, I, here we go. We're doing, we're doing it. We're oh. doing a spinoff. It's it's being announced in real time, right? <laughs> Bitch. The oh, I'm like the way I would so be down for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills podcast. We just we have blown through eight seasons of it on another. I think this is my second rewatch, third rewatch. I still love it. I still love it. That's Jamie turned to me during the weeks that it was off. It was like, what if we just like started rewatching this? And I was like, I it. Jamie, it is two months ago I binged all of it. I need just give me a little bit of a break. Okay, you say that. But this fucking episode I ended I, I the episode ended and my first thought was, oh my fucking god. They all knew this. I, do, I need to figure out when they all figured this out. And I am convinced that the producers were, like, putting Easter eggs into the season to, like, lead up to this. So I am for sure going to rewatch this season and see what they did to, like, uh, uh, foreshadow this I episode. I cannot wait. So and good. listen, I know some of you are here and you're sitting there being like, okay, but when are they going to talk about horror? And listen, baby, this show is horror in itself. Oh my God, Just yes. like seeing this drama unfold, like th the feelings that I get from watching a horror movie, I get from a lot of these episodes being like, yes. oh my God, where are we going? How did we get here? Like goosebumps, I'm screaming, chills, I'm yelling. Sc yeah. <laughs> get into it, bitch. <laughs> Okay. 
let's put that aside because I don't okay. want to know anything else. Okay. I we maybe we'll come we'll we'll do a full circle. We'll come back to it the next episode. We'll like hash. Oh it my god, we have out. to. We have to. Um. Okay. Salt so, burn. Salt burn. You you loved you loved it, so I'll let you go first. Okay. Yes. So um, salt burn is just like. A queer coded parasite, and I, you will always mm. get me with a, a film whose theme is eat the rich. I'm always sat. I'm always seated. Um, I loved the way that it was revealed in the end. I knew everything already, but I loved the way that they presented the information. Um, Jacob Elordi is so fucking hot. In a way that it's like, do you know you're hot? I think you know. Do you but know? He's, he's so hot in like a in like I know this is a joke that's been going around, but in a baby girl type way. Yes, like, baby so girl, baby, baby girl. girl. Yes, like he is like uh oh, crap. What's the term for? It? He's like the indie like pixie girl, uh, but in a, a man's manic body. Pixie dream girl. There we go. But it's but it's him. He 100%. is that. One hundred percent. But also rich. <clears throat> um. Well, and I love a man whose sexuality is ambiguous. And yes, you can say that people are uh, uh, gay baiting, whatever. But the man said that his first crush was like, oh gosh, I don't remember. But it was a man. And I was like, well, mm. let me stop there because I will not entertain any of those queer baited conversations. It's the whole entire story is about chaotic bisexuals. Yes. They're both them chaotic bisexuals, mm -hmm. period. It's not queer baiting. They are bisexuals. Well, and we don't I, need... I am... I No, I totally agree with you. We do not need to be force-fed the information. We don't need the character to say, I am a bisexual, for us to know what's going on. Yeah. <clears throat> so... I support bisexual rights and wrongs, and this movie is all about bisexual wrongs. Be bi, do crime. Um... Which is exactly what, uh, 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 what is, oh, Barry Keegan did. Mm -hmm. Also very cute. He's, like, hot, but, like, he's in his 20s, but also, like, are you in your 40s? He's, I, I'm pretty sure we've had this conversation on this podcast or on stream before where, like, I think a person is more attractive if there's something, like, a little strange. Like, they have some mm -hmm. unique feature that I'm, like... Like, like a big nose totally. or like something like something's going on where it's like you're not picture perfect. Like Jacob Elordi is kind of like picture perfect. You're like, you're hot because you're hot. Yeah. But Barry, you're like, what, so why I, do I want to get on my knees? I totally agree with you. And uh, in that vein, I have always had a thing for facial scars. I've always thought they were very sexy. Um, and the people who have the facial scars generally really hate them. And I'm like, no, uh, stop. Love yourself. Love yourself and let me love you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's talk about what you didn't like about it. What didn't, you, what didn't you like? Well, let me first start by saying that, like, this movie is Zach coded. Like, it through and through. Chaotic bisexuals, mm -hmm. the soundtrack, the cinematography, all of the actors. Gorgeous. Like, the thing is, this movie, I should have, like, I yeah. should have eaten up. Everything about it. Mm-hmm. My issue was I think that some of the things, some of the, like, I think it could have been better. My issue is I liked so much of what it was trying to do that I wish it had been done slightly better. Like, the thing is, it was already a two-hour movie, mm -hmm. but I'm like, I needed more. But then the other thing is, like, if you're not doing everything I want in two hours... I, like two hours is already the cap, but mm -hmm. like I needed certain things. So like an example for me, I don't think, I wish I remember the character's names. Do you remember? Uh, there's Felix was it's Jacob. Jacob. Um, I should. So I got the names. Okay. <clears throat> so Barry Keoghan plays Oliver quick. And then we have Felix. Oliver. Yeah. Oliver. So my thing is where we, I don't, tr like, I think all the other characters were really, really strong. Barry's character never fully made sense. Uh, Oliver's character, the character of Oliver never fully made sense to me. And even at the end, and I'll come back, even at the end where they showed everything happening, 
I couldn't believe anything from it because we never, from the very beginning, we were supposed to look back and be like, oh, he plotted a lot of this. There was a lot of manipulation, stuff like that. But there was no, like, there was no hints throughout the movie of him, like, being this master manipulator or how he could be a master manipulator. Like, how did he suddenly have this ability to completely sexually manipulate these people? Like, both, uh, both, what was, uh... What was the sister's name? Like, she was kind of crushing on, like, a new guy in the area kind of thing. But the manipulation that he... And the control he held over her being like, I'm gonna do... I'm gonna take your period blood. I'm gonna lick it, make you lick it. And then I'm gonna control you the next day. And then being able to do that to Fairly, who hated him, the, like, in a couple scenes later, it just... It gave this, like, weird energy that... I, I don't know if it was the actor couldn't bring it or it just there wasn't enough plot for me to believe that he was this master manipulator, controlling person that like could get these people to do everything he wanted. See, because I felt... did. I felt like watching him just kind of like sit in the background and the way he was like watching people felt very calculated throughout so... the whole film for me. She brings up, like, in the, the scene where she's in the bathtub, she's like, you're a little spider, you've been hang clinging to the walls. But I feel like we didn't actually get that many scenes of him. We got the scene where he, like, hears something, like, fairly talking with uh, Felix, and he, like, goes and listens at the window. But we don't really see that many scenes of him, like, actually creeping around and listening. Most of the scenes were montages of him just having fun with the group. Like... There wasn't well, I think that's part of, of the gag, but we also see him, like, watching Felix hook up with that girl. Like, he follows him. He's standing outside of his window. Like, that's not something normal people do. But that, there's just, there's still not enough for me to believe that he was as calculating as it wants you to believe at the end of the film. Especially when we go back and meet his parents and stuff like that. If they had dropped something where it's like... Where they had, like, given us some piece of, like, oh, yeah, he's always been very particular about how he has this or this or this done. But, like, there's no, like, this character just, like, until the very end where they're, like, you have to believe he set up every single thing. It's, like, I think I, I just didn't believe it. I think the, the whole, the uh, storyline with his parents... I think is supposed to do a lot of legwork here because we, when he's in at school, his relationship with his parents, like you think is just not good. Like they do not like him or he does not like them. There's something going on there. So when we find out that a, his dad never died and B they're like hella sweet and nice and giving, you're just kind of like, Oh, there's something going on here. And he is definitely doing work to, have a specific perception, outward perception of himself. But the parents <clears throat> never lean into, like, like they have no clue that their child is this manipulative. There's, like, nothing where they're not even, like, phased by anything that has, like, happened. They have no, like, if you are a child that is, like, this character is meant to be, like, a sociopath kind of thing, like, is, but the parents give no inclination of their child having any having this nature i mean i've seen enough or i've like read or uh listened to enough true crime podcasts movies what have you where the like serial killer you talk to their parents and they're like we had no idea he was like really nice he was like the um popular person in the neighborhood like they're good at manipulating the people around them to see what they want them to see in them. Maybe. Cause I don't, I, I don't know enough, but I still feel like as a parent, you would have some kind of, you would notice something peculiar unless you're completely like oblivious to everything. There are a on. lot of parents. But like the thing is as a viewer, this is not real life. I wanted to be clued in. Cause the, the funny thing is, I called every single thing that happened, but I called in a way that was like, damn, you know what I'd really like if this movie, if he actually lied about his parents. Two scenes later, Felix was driving back to the house and it was like, and it was, and then I said to Jane, I was like, I would really like it if actually it turns out he's just trying to kill these people and steal from them. And he like set this all up from the very beginning <clears throat> and he put the tack into the bike or something like that. So I don't, ended up, 
I the thing is I called it all, but see that's what I okay I, so I, this is what I love about it because I don't think that he went into it with the intention of stealing their money. I think he very genuinely wanted to be friends with Felix. And the closer that he got to Felix and the closer he got to this lifestyle and this level of wealth, he was like, these people are fucking garbage people, garbage humans who do not deserve this wealth, do not deserve this influence. And I'm going to take it from them. And I relate to that on a molecular level. Yeah. No, I I think you're correct. I think you are correct because they have the moment with um cuz when she dies and uh Oliver's the only one that actually has like an oh that's sad, sad. like the rest of them are just like I should do anything for attention best but line he was, so good but he was the one that started the manipulation of like they had already they like they talk behind people's backs they're man, they're they're rich snooty people kind of thing I, like, I just, I don't have a clear idea of what Oliver's character was fully supposed to be. A master manipulator, just a guy in love, someplace in between. I think it's someplace it in just, between, and it's the growth of that. Because you kind of see his demeanor change after that conversation with the gay dude in their house, Farley. Farley. Uh, Because pretty early on, Farley is like, you will not live here. You will go home. Uh, the, after the summer and you will live your life and this will be the most exciting time in your life. You will talk talk about it for the rest of your life. I live here. This is my life. This is not your life. And that's, I feel like when he's kind of like, oh, I will show you how much it is my life. I, I maybe you need to watch it again. I don't know. I think I loved it. I that's, know I loved it. That's the thing. I think it has a lot of good ideas and I really like, like I fully like <sighs> so many elements of it. I just think some of the writing was weaker and needed, was relying too much on the vibes instead of really defining a character for me. That's fair. And you know what? I'm here for a vibe. I love a vibe. Well, the vibes were immaculate. immaculate. But it's just what getting to the very end and them all of a sudden being like, and here's the full montage of everything he did was just like it felt like it was too like let's wrap this up really quickly and let's get like here is the gag but it's like the gag was predictable like so i needed like i i if like this gag is something that's been done before i wanted to see a lot of the process or have little things where i'm like wait did you notice that he had done this kind of thing but they basically it felt like they cut off cut out all of the strategic elements to just be like, look at this doe eyed person who's like unpresuming. And yeah, he's, so I he's think... a little weird, but then they kind of went back and tried to redefine his character and be like, all this time he's been this. I don't think that that's the case. And I think that's where you're, you're getting hung up. I don't feel like he was ever supposed to be a master manipulator. I really think that all of these instances he was pushed to, like when he killed Felix, they things that he said to uh, things that Felix said to him were so mean, like so like uh, person breaking that it's like he just kind of snapped and did it. Same with the girl in the bathtub. She said some fucking nasty shit to him. I think he just snapped. I think the only thing that he manipulated was becoming friends with Felix in the first place with uh, messing up the bicycle. I think everything else was just a reaction to what he was receiving. Okay. I, I, I could see, like, I a hundred percent think you are correct. Like that's the difficulty that I have is I think you are correct. It's, just the snapping the the way they conveyed everything together at the end there where they're like from 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 him walking looking out the window seeing this guy to popping the bike to everything mm -hmm. they like put it together in a way that like i think the snapping would have made more sense to me if earlier we had found out that he had 
forced his way into into Felix's life. Mm-hmm. If we got a little bit more inclination that he had done kind of the things, because they gave you so much at the end that you just had to swallow and accept that I would have liked to have been along for that journey a little bit longer. Because I think I could have believed the snap a lot more if I already knew that there was something off about him. But like a lot of the movie he spent being kind of this like doe eye, just like, oh, I'm just, I'm just here. I just like this guy. Mm -hmm. That it's like, then all of a sudden, like everything hits so hard that you're like, whoa, this is a lot. But if you knew that he was a little bit like more fucked up, like, yeah, we get the, the, the lie from the parents. But at that point, it's kind of like, I mean, everything's revealed. You don't think that him fingering this girl after her telling him that she's on her period and then sticking her fingers, his fingers in her mouth and then making out with her, that's not clue enough that there's something off? Absolutely. But that is so beyond off that, like, then having the conversation where it's like, oh, he just liked this guy and he just, like, the only manipulation was getting into his life. But, like, that is such a weird escalation that was just, like, it felt like that's, it felt like that scene was done just for the shock value, and it didn't really make sense to his character, who was in love with this one guy. So it's like, why was his target suddenly changed to manipulating her? And I, going he's just so saying what he far. can get away with at that point. But that is so much to try to get away with. But she was like, into that's it. that's not... That, but it's like, that's not even like a breadcrumb. Like we were like hit with that. Like how, how did this character that like was just hanging out with like the most nerdy, awkward guy in college, hanging out with the other most nerdy, awkward guy, all of a sudden now he's this master fingerer manipulator that's getting this rich girl to do whatever he wants because he's so sexually controlling. And it's like. How did we get from point A of him just hanging out with this nerdy with this nerdy guy being like a loser to all of a sudden I can manipulate this girl and I'm doing this crazy sexual thing to all of a sudden I'm manipulating this guy who hates me Farley and fucking him over to now I'm pl- like I'm snapping but planning deaths and I'm planning I, them far enough to get the whole entire property. I think it's it all a just... fix. It's like because he going in this whole Felix and then once he meets them this entire family are so like above him in a higher echelon of life. So the second that he gets a hint of one of these like higher echelon people kind of fawning over him, he's like let me let me like see what i can do here and i think he's just like really getting off on it every chance that he gets but the jump from like talk like talking to the mom calling her beautiful knowing this girl's waiting for him to all of a sudden going i'm gonna figure her like her period blood make her and then i'm gonna control her diet and make like it's just, it's a lot for me. That, it's a lot for me to swallow. Just That's like fair. all that period blood. It's a lot to swallow. <laughs> That's fair. I did not have a, as difficult a time swallowing at all. The other thing is like, I felt like there were some storylines that I think would have been more interesting if they came in. Like the fact that that friend from the last summer, Eddie is brought up. Never, Nothing's ever done with that. I would have liked to have like had that play in. Well, we I, think, had... I think there's a reason for that because he was completely cut off. And that was a warning tale to um, Oliver to be like, I need to make my mark or do something different here. Otherwise, I'm just going to be cast aside and they're going to be talking about me like the kid from last summer. Okay, I can see that. What I would have liked is if... Because, like, very specifically, the sister, who we're both blanking on name, uh, she was like, oh, you're just another of his playthings. I would have liked to have known a little bit more about that because it definitely there is a sexual like vibe between them i was hoping that there was something like he was using these boys and then getting rid of them and then that would have been a better snap i think for me than what we got is like if his heart was broken by this guy or something like that i mean that's fair i i i um i understand where you're coming from Notice how we also like didn't talk about the salt the the bathtub scene, even though everyone wouldn't shut up about it. And I was like, eh. okay, so yes, I have thoughts like, eh. about the bathtub scene. Um, and this is something that I also really liked about the film. I feel like I was not spoiled, but there was a lot 
that was presented to me via Twitter about this movie. So I knew bits and pieces going in. Obviously, the most talked about scene was the bathtub scene. So going into it, at first I'm like, okay, this isn't that bad. I was legitimately expecting like actual cum on the drain. Um, But then he started slurping. And then it kept going. And I was like, okay. I thought I was prepared for this. I was not as prepared for this as I thought. So that scene did get me still. Not See, in like a I, hot way in like, a, oh, this is like, this is a lot. Maybe I'm just built different because that scene, I didn't even bat an eye at. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Just I think it was, it, up, sound, it was the sounds for me. Ooh, I can still hear it. But what did get me <clears throat> is the grave scene. I was like, why is no one talking about the grave? That they was did. the scene that got me. My husband turned to me after that scene. He was like, did that give you a boner? And I was like, I don't think so. But I still think it was, it was, kind of, it was still kind of hot, but it was also, See, it was weird. It was weird. I, I do absolutely love that scene. I saw like some, uh, some different takes on it. Mm-hmm. My interpretation of that, which I really like is like, he actually, he, even though he keeps saying, was I in love with, uh, was I in love with Felix? No, but like, I think he truly was in love with him. And because he couldn't fuck him in life, he was like, I'm going to fuck him in death. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No. And so I actually really loved the, the story of that being like pining so hard that he's like, but then it, it kind of clashes with, it's like, okay, but you're the one that killed him. But it's like, if I can't have you in life, I'll have you with death kind of thing. If I can't have you, nobody will. Yeah. You're not going to do this to somebody else and I'm going to fuck you. Yeah, there's it's there's there's something really interesting in that. Um Yeah. I loved it. I loved that movie a lot more than I thought I would. I really enjoyed it for what it was worth, but I think it was presented to me as going to be a lot more revolutionary, deeper than it did. So I think I went in with a lot higher expectations than I should have had. And if I went in with lower expectations, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. So this is a a, a, a theme that I'm sensing from you is that you are expecting more from these films and expecting something groundbreaking. And I don't think that the things that are coming out lately are not focused on that. We're really trying to get back to like the eighties and nineties of like, just kind of unhinged, fully contained stories. Like I kind of, I almost liken this to maybe, um, gosh, the witches of Eastwick is kind of the first thing that's coming to, to my mind. It's, it's Ooh. a slow burn. And then at the end you're like, what the fuck am I watching? And it's kind of like none of it really makes sense, but you're still having fun and you're, it makes you ask questions about the film and not doing something groundbreaking or um, reinventing the wheel, you know? See, I would, yes, I would liken this to like Neon Demon or like Spring Breakers. Where Two you're movies kind of like I haven't this, seen. I Spring Breakers is not good, but I love it. Um but that's the thing. I think that if this could have been a movie where I'm, where I would be like, it wasn't like to me. I don't think it was the greatest movie, but I really enjoyed it because it's like for me. And I think you're right about that theme that like if people keep telling me there's something re- like really amazing going on or something like that, I go into it and I end up a little disappointed. I think that might color certain things for me. So in that vein, I think people need to stop being so hyperbolic all the fucking time about mm. everything it's uh, i'm seeing this kind of uh, discourse is not the right word because it's not that deep um but seeing a lot of people they're like post a picture of a woman and being like this was a 9.8 on the cunter scale she mother quake cunt pussy <laughs> I hope people say that about me when I post a thirst trap. And it's like, I, people will retweet it and they're like, <clears throat> you could just say she's pretty. <laughs> repeat, <laughs> repeat after me. She looks nice. <laughs> like like mm. the, the, the race to the hyperbolic bottom is, is really, um, 
watering down everything because like you said you go into this film thinking it's going to be the most insane groundbreaking never been done before never seen before type of thing and you're just like oh this was just another movie well and that's you brought up which i hadn't even like made the connection in my brain this being like somewhat of like a parasite type thing parasite was groundbreaking because it just like was Mm -hmm. it just like at the time like that was a movie that blew my fucking mind this was just a movie that was yeah good this was a slow burn for sure and we're here for the aesthetic and the vibe and the murders are a side plot see and i even like now having this conversation i think that like i like i said i do get trapped into those expectations whereas on the completely other side something that did not make my top five though i really thought about it was like cocaine bear i went in with zero oh, expectations same. and i had a great time and so i loved fun. that movie because i had no expectations <clears throat> no one told me it was good most people said they hated it so yep. i was like this was fun i had a great time it was silly So I think maybe if I did have more of that, but the thing, I think there's something to also be said about, I wanted it to be as great as hyperbolic people were making it out to be because the cinematography, the acting, the characters, everything was so beautiful and so good that I think some of the plot points, I wish were just a little stronger. And I think that colored it for me because I just, I wanted more, but also asking any more than a two hour movie. I, I, yeah, I'm right there with you. The two hours is my cutoff for sure. Um, so we want to close with some ins and outs for out for the old year in for the new year. mm -hmm. Nick prepared a full list. Mm -hmm. I had nothing. (laughs) So I'm flying by the seat of my pants and Nick, give us some of those ins and outs. Okay. In, Drinking in moderation and not trying to chase a feeling because I find myself drinking, drinking, drinking and not getting that drunk. And then I get home and I'm fucking shit faced with nowhere to where nowhere to go, nowhere to be and no one to see. And then the next morning I'm miserable. That happens quite a bit to me. I don't know if it's just like my metabolism or something's happening, but I will like be good to go home. I'll be on, I'll be on the bus or I'll be in my Uber and I'll be yeah. like, la 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 la. I'll get home. I'll get some food. And I'll be like, yeah, I'm like, are the walls hitting me right now? Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, that's a good one. <clears throat> Wait, let me, since mine, I have one that's very similar. Okay. So let me go out mm-hmm. drinks at the bar. Oh, in Pre-game. shrooms on the couch. Oh, <laughs> 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 that's great um have you ever made a, a shroom s- s- smoothie no highly recommend do a little research um we have these daddies in town who um just put in a fucking massive pool and so we uh, were at their pool quite a bit this summer um and they would make um magic mushroom smoothies and they were lovely made me feel amazing Fun. So, Someone to the New Year's party brought um, mushroom shots. They were okay. like this, like creamy kind of like I, I going off of Lost other people's creamy, but... like. I mean, it was just like a little shooter that was like sweet. I did not try one because I was hosting. I mm. was not doing drugs if I'm hosting because I'm a professional host. Yeah, I need to make sure everyone's having a good time and is out at a reasonable time and no one's breaking anything. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, so that's fine. <sighs> um, okay. Next out. Um, being DL on the apps, we're all family here. It's just especially bad in the state that I live. Like if you go on the grid, it's half faceless profiles. And if they do have faces, it's like a 50, 50 crap shoot of whether or not I'm being catfished. So, um, listen mm. on the apps, on grinder, on sniffies, we're all family. You don't need to guard your identity uh, like it's a fucking bank vault. If I'm going to meet you and suck your dick, I'm going to see your face. So just show your fucking face. Wait, are you talking about like in the DMs or just like on the grid? All of it. Okay, so less on the grid. But once we're chatting, if I ask you for a face picture and you tell me you're DL, I'm done. 
Uh, yeah, no, I can understand that. Done. That's that's the thing, and like, listen, I get some people. It's not safe for them to come out of the closet. There's reasons, blah blah. blah. But if you are meeting a person, you are going to see their face, and also, I need to know who I'm meeting. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yes. like, yeah, no, I don't <sighs> think at this point in my life, I don't think. Listen, I don't care what your cock looks like. I don't care totally how agree. juicy that hole is. If I don't know what you look like and I don't know who I'm meeting up with, I ain't going. Yeah, First because of all, because if <clears throat> if you murder me and my partner is like, "Here's who he went to meet up with." A dick pic is not going to get that person arrested. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, like, well, and if you're not uh, honest enough to show me what your face looks like, I don't believe that that's really what your dick looks like. Oh, true. I'm sorry, I don't. No, I'm 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 with you on this one. So all of the guys, as someone who doesn't use the hookup apps at all, I'm I'm still with you. So all of the guys on Twitter who say, um, "No, I'm 30 years old. I don't have Snapchat." I say, "Boo you! Get Snapchat." I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I ask for your Snapchat, it's because I want you to send me an actual photo of yourself. I do. Hi, I'm 30 and I do not have Snapchat and I will never get Snapchat again. But you're also like very forthcoming about who you are. Like I can go on Twitter and I can see you. That's yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's let me just quickly before you move on to your next one. I am so bad at texting and responding to DMs oh, that Snapchat was the bane of my existence that someone would send me a picture and expect a response from me of me being like, here I am doing a thing or like looking a certain way. No, baby. I'm oh. not like, I cannot respond. So people were like, you broke the streak that we had. I'm like, see, I don't care about that. I don't care Be about lucky that. you got a response. Yeah. I'm and anxious. I'm also um, being fine with not responding to things. I w- used to be very much like I would get the last word just because like it felt like not responding to a message felt inconsiderate. I'm losing that. And I am, if the conversation is over, I'm done. Not every text needs a response. Yes. And let me, let me hit you with in understanding that people are anxious don't have time to respond to everyone Mm -hmm. or that sometimes people just forget they're like i i see that you sent me something let me think on my response and then you just forget it doesn't mean that you're disliked doesn't mean anything like that it just realize we all have lives and we cannot be texting 24 7 yes okay um moving on ins kisses between friends Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just think it's nice and when I'm drunk I like to make out that's all um that was great thank you thank you um uh uh uh, let's see and out online shopping boo over it huh I'm over it I'm over it huh okay wait I a little bit more give me like a little a little something um it's it's more like big box store specific. Um Amazon, very specifically Amazon. Um if if there is a chance that I can get something locally within $5, I'm going to go get it at the store. I don't want to I have I have an Amazon credit card. I am tired of seeing the balance on it. I'm tired of uh, giving a trillion dollar corporation my money for the sake mm. of convenience. And I also want to, I'm, I'm trying to get away from uh, the lazy um, instant gratification type of fix. Like I will go to the store and I will go grab that thing. I will go to the mall as much as I hate it because I will am physically walking into the store. I'm giving my patronage. I, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm over sending my money out into the ether. Does that make no, sense? I, yeah, no, I understand this actually. <clears throat> I, I a hundred percent understand this. That's like, I think. And yeah. Online shopping out- does not, uh, uh, does not, uh, 
Small businesses, I will give you my money. I will do my online shopping for small businesses. No, but about the, the, the big business thing, especially like looking at Amazon kind of thing, because <clears throat> there is never a time where I'm like, hey, I need this one thing from Amazon that then I don't add like six other things I don't need to my cart. Yep. Because I'm like, well, I'm, if I pay thir if I hit thirty five dollars, I get the free shipping. <gasps> you so, don't have Prime. No. Oh. Okay. Mm -mm. See, well, I mean, I I do I do pay for Prime, which maybe Out? I shouldn't paying for Prime. Oh, uh, I know, I know, I know. Or that's one that like, unlike Netflix, which like fuck Netflix for its own reasons, you could just share. Like I, one of my friend's parents pays for Prime and like five of us use it. I was gonna say, I would give you my Prime login. Um, but talking about Netflix, piracy. In. In, bitch. In. We are pirating, bitch. Call me Luffy. I'm a pirate, R. I am downloading as much as I can in 2024. What was it? Um, it was Sony. This past. I'm year. sorry. I it just hit my brain. Call me Luffy. Wow, that <laughs> just hit my brain. That was a plus, a Thank plus, you. a plus. Truly. Thank you. Um, Sony saying that uh they have they no longer have the rights to whatever entities, franchises, whatever, and that despite. Whether or not you paid for the content, it is leaving Sony and you cannot access it. So once buying something does not mean I own it, that's a wrap for me, bitch. I, I do not trust these companies not to just pull this content, even if it's their own. It's ma It makes no sense to me so 2024 yeah. we're pirating our movies and tv well, shows especially because best buy just announced that they're no longer doing sales of dvds and blu-rays in store also really like, gaggy that's, that's gaggy. i am i'm a bitch that if i really like something i will go and buy the blu-ray or dvd because i never want to be in a place where i do not have access to something that i love and that i would pay money to see again and these, like, streaming services, they didn't really... I, I noticed it didn't really happen that much this season, which was surprising. But, like, Halloween's before, certain things they would all of a sudden put behind a paywall. Immediately, it was like, like it right was like, before October. The entire year, Halloween was available on Amazon Prime. And then as soon as October comes around, they're like, ooh, so do you want to rent it? Yep. It's like, no! Yep. No, I'm I'm right there with you. Pisses me off. So, yeah. and I'm all, I also made the mistake a few years ago because I was like, everything's moving to streaming now. I don't need to have this giant Blu-ray collection. I sold all of my Blu-rays. So I have like maybe 10. Mm, I got to I will <clears throat> not get rid of my Blu-rays. I hold on to them for dear life. And I've I learned my lesson. I will now, anytime I go to a Goodwill or any kind of thrift store, I go into that DVD <gasps> section. I go oh, into bitch. that Blu-ray section and I pick up, I'm like, do I want to rewatch Krampus every year? Yes, you do. Yes. Can I tell you what I found at the Goodwill a couple weeks ago? What? Season two, full season, six discs of King of the Hill for $2.99, bitch. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I copped that immediately mm -hmm. at the Goodwill. Goodwill. In thrift stores again. Yes. Out? Yes. Out? Yes. Like, thrift stores are back in like we're not bringing back the macklemore song we don't mm -mm. need people to like be motivated to the thrift stores anymore because remember it was this whole entire era of, yeah. like the hipster era yeah we're keeping that out yeah but go to the thrift stores and like get something nice for yourself there's nice things at the thrift stores well not only that the things at the thrift store if you're looking well enough anything 10 years ago is going to be much better quality than anything being produced right now Mm -hmm. um, um, one more out while we were talking about thrift stores out really bougie ass thrift stores what do you mean you want me to spend $500 on a Britney Spears shirt yes bitch oh my I god I don't care if it's from a concert it's a shirt thank you thank you I went into this uh, thrift store because I'm very much into thrifting right now I I, this past year, 2023, I gained like 30 pounds. So like none of my clothes fit me and I don't have a job, so I can't go buy a new wardrobe. So I'm very much going thrifting often. Um, went to this place called Uptown Cheapskate. Cheapskate 
I'm a cheapskate. You would think. You would think. Bitch. Bitch. 45 fucking dollars for this thin ass little jacket thing. I was like, I don't, I just, I looked at like three price tags. And I was like, we have to go. We have to go. None of this is worth this. A Nike tank top for $35? No. I can go to Nike and buy it for that much. I do not care if it's vintage. I do not care if you have, if you collected it and blah, blah, blah. blah. I do not care. If another person's body has worn it for multiple times, I am not spending over 20 bucks. Preach. Someone else's juices Preach. have been in that. It will never be the same as it once was. As, uh, unless it is its designer, I completely agree with you. Totally agree. Like, <clears throat> unless, like, going back to the Britney Spears shirt, unless it is from, like, a tour. Yes. That this does not exist anymore. But no, oh. no, no. This just, just, this just had Britney Spears' face on it. Okay, Like, well, it wasn't a tour shirt. It wasn't anything. Let like, me hit you with this and let me, tell me what you're, what you think. So, when we went and saw the Renaissance tour in Kansas City, um, the day that we got in, there was, the, there's a monthly, uh, vintage, like, uh, pop-up shop outside. And I, I was excited. We went. Um, did not find hardly anything. I found one t-shirt. Uh, it had like, had it was a, two different bands, like massive bands. I want to say like ACDC and uh, somebody else. Super cool shirt. It was um, from a show that they did in 1991. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's my birth year. That's so fun. I went and asked the price. Do you want to guess how much that t-shirt cost? One ninety nine. Okay, you guessed too high. A hundred and forty five dollars. Okay. That's for see, a t shirt. I, was, I, was I going laughed a in wild. his face. Yeah. No. Well, no. He said one forty five, and I said okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a piece of fabric. No. <laughs> it's a piece of fabric. I, no. I don't care. I don't care how vintage it is. I don't care how collector it is because the thing is i'm going to wear it on my body i'm gonna get ramen on it yep. i'm gonna spill some wine on it it is not going to last like no no out out thank you out okay um let me, since we're talking about clothing let me hit you with both of I, all of mine are like things that are linked up so let me hit you with okay. out short shorts <gasps> in shorter, shorter shorts, shorts. <laughs> how short can we go <laughs> Bitch, how, like, I would like there to be the risk of my balls always popping out. Like, how short can we go? Hey, uh, be the change you want to see in the world, baby. Start wearing those shorts. Let me see what they look like, and I might that's, follow I need, I need a place to be making them for me. Uh, oh, to... that's fair. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, most of these women are wearing the most skin-tight sh shit at the gym. Maybe that's what we need to do. We just need to make I uh, think so. uh, our own... Um, a fitness wear. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have three more outs. <clears throat> uh, my last, my last in is handmade stuff. Um, I'm learning how to make candles. Um, I want to learn how to uh, sew. So mm. uh, making things and not, uh, yeah, making things in. Well, that's <clears throat> the thing. The price of everything is going up. But the price of materials, you could still, like, get pretty cheap. Yeah. It's just because these people are, these companies are taking the things, and the price of the materials isn't increasing, but they're constantly increasing the price of the product to make more money. Yep. Capitalism. Capitalism. <clears throat> okay. Um, out. Ugh, so out. Um, also out, not wearing deodorant. I went to a, a, a next party recently. And um, at least three of those men there, the fucking rankest body odor I have ever smelled. Could not stand within three feet of them because it was it was like giving me a headache. One of them, when they came in, gave my husband a hug and Nathan was like, I had to go wash my shoulder off because it smelled so bad. That's the thing. Listen, you could do whatever you want with your own body, but once you are around other people that have to deal with your smells, with certain things, you need to be you need to be aware that yep. you are in other people's space and they are dealing with certain things that you are presenting to them and they do not have Just because being stinky is your kink does not mean 
Stank is my kink. Sorry. That's like going back to, uh, like, we can't get into the full thing, but I know we're in agreement on this. The whole entire fulsome of that guy wearing shit on his body. Oh. Like, I don't care what message you're presenting. I do not care. If I have to smell, look at that, or even be at risk of contamination because you touch something that I am going to go, that I am going to touch. No, 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 no. You need, no, no, no. No more. Just, we, Do a photo shoot you in your enough. own house. Do a photo shoot in your own house. I don't care. But okay. in public, no. I don't like the poop stuff. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> Baby, you started this episode talking about poop. And I hated <laughs> it then too. <laughs> Stop pooping. Um. <laughs> okay, okay. Let, me hit you with, let me hit you with my last one. Hit me. Uh, and I need you to stick with me on this one. Out, sugar daddies. Okay. In, pay pigs. <laughs> I don't want to do anything. I don't want to have to respond to your text being like, oh, daddy, or anything like that. No, no, no. If you're going to give me the money, just give me the money. I agree. Just give me the money. You should be into it because it's your kink. It should not be that you want to control me or you want anything from me. If, you, if you're into giving me money, give me money. I agree. I'm but at if a you point... want something from me... Then we need to negotiate. There needs to be a higher terms on, yes. There needs to be terms on the table, and it needs to not go beyond that. Kind of, it doesn't. It's not related at all. Um, guys with lip fillers, out. Stop getting lip fillers. Your lips look weird. There are like little light spots. Like you can tell that you are just plumping your lips, and it it's so uncanny valley to me. It looks crazy. The reason that women can get their lips filled and it looks incredible is because they are lining their lips. They are putting <gasps> lipstick. They are putting something on their lips that, like, gives us the fantasy. Your splotchy, blown up lips with nothing but chapstick is not doing it. So if you're getting mm. lip fillers, you better be a drag queen or you better be a little femme and put some color on those lips. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I feel very mm -hmm. passionate about this. Okay, and because we are there, the time has flown by. Two hours what, officially. What is that final in or out or both? Um, did I have another in? Hold on. I don't know. You had some. You had more than I did. In local Ooh, drag okay. shows. Local drag shows. Support your local queens. And especially even more than just they're in, get into them. If you yes. want to get into drag. Get into the local yes, scene. Yes, absolutely. And the rest of us, get in there and pay the queens. I'm, I'm like really slowly trying to to get the bug in my husband's ear to start doing bearded drag because he would kill, he would slay, he would murder on the if, dance floor. If you have not, I see what you did there. If you have not seen Nick's husband in drag, it's, oh baby, it is so good. He's sexy, and he just got tits. So brand like, new tits. It's good. Miss mm. new tits. Um, no. Okay, my out. George Santos. That's all that needs to be said. Period. <laughs> Period. <laughs> all right, y'all. Well, thank you so much for coming <clears throat> back and hanging with us. Thank you for letting us take that little break we all needed for the holidays. I hope you all had a great uh, whatever holiday you celebrate and new year. Yeah, baby. And uh, please come back. We're going to be back next week and we will because... We did not Nick and, I, Nick and I had a lot of catch up. So next week we'll probably be doing, pro I say probably because. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, we'll do our top five from 2023 since we were supposed to do that this time and did not. Oops. And some other stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, come hang out with us next week. Thanks for hanging out this week. I hope you guys had a an uh, amazing holiday week season session. Session um yeah, yeah. we love y'all and um find bye sluts socials. oh <laughs> <laughs> no, i knew exactly what you were doing but i was like hold on first find us on socials yeah you can find us individually or the podcast it would mean a lot to us if you followed the podcast socials please follow the podcast please interact with us on social media so we can get more eyes on the podcast um and 
yeah and thank you for listening if you've been listening we really appreciate you i know uh there are a couple of you out there that i know are like super fans of the podcast which is really cool i like hearing that feedback so if you're enjoying it let us know um and yeah yeah we'll see you next time and especially we would like to hear stuff like what you thought about Saltburn, if you're like completely with Nick or if you're a little bit with me or you had like your other thoughts, just don't be mean about it or weird about it. Um, And somebody did give me a a topic that they want us to talk about. So we will need to do that, too. I need to find that DM because I don't remember oh, hell yeah. what it is anymore, but I will find it. Oh, baby, we love some suggestions also. Yeah. But again, <clears throat> don't be weird about it. Don't be mean about it. And if we don't do it. Sorry. Don't be mean about it. Yep. Don't be weird about it. Exactly. All Anyways. Right. And on that note, bye, bye sluts. sluts. <laughs> bye, sluts.